Hello, everyone. Um, I want us to have a discussion about our African pastors, specifically our Ghanaian pastors. Africans, as we all know, are generally very spiritual people. We are very religious people. Whatever happens to us, we base it from, uh, we see, it, we tackle it from a spiritual or religious point of view. And if you know Ghana, you, you know that we have a lot of trending pastors who are always bringing out all sorts of prophecies about things that are about to happen. Some of them do come true, others don't. And Nigeria as well. Uh, one of the very, very interesting prophecies in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic is that which Prophet T.B. Joshua made. And I was I was super excited about it, and I was looking forward to it happening because that would have been so good. COVID nineteen would have left all of us. He made a prophecy that he prophesied that COVID nineteen was going to disappear the way it came on the twenty seventh of March. That was last Friday, but unfortunately, it didn't happen. That didn't come to pass. And then, um, even though it didn't happen, it doesn't mean he's still, he's still not worried about it. So he went on to say, to share on his Facebook account. I'm just going to read to you. He said, last meeting, I shared with you one of my habits. I'm going to share with you today one more. My viewers, you deserve what I deserve. This is a revelation. In the morning... Take a cup of hot water and two lemons. Cut the lemons into small slices and put in the cup. After three to five minutes, begin to sip it as a drink. Refill it three times. I will advise you to move about, walk around the compound or premises as you are sipping. And he goes on and on and on and saying it helps in digestion and all that. At least it shows that, okay, if the spiritual, so this is just to say that if the spiritual aspect is not working, let's come to the human or medical aspect. And so he was sharing this with us as a way of keeping ourselves healthy in order to be able to stand the COVID-19 pandemic. He did not go on to mention what else we should do, which other prophecy is going to come out, why, uh, or maybe why the COVID-19 hasn't gone away as he promised it was going to go away. We don't know. But at least he has said something. He has done something. But what I am worried about, what I have been uh, you know, thinking about, is the Ghanaian pastors. They, are, they were too loud. They are too loud about everything. They seem to know everything that is happening. But on this very topic, Everyone is mute. Everyone is shut. I don't even know if they are still in Ghana or not. Where are the Obofors? Where are the Obinims? Where are the uh, Usu Bempes? Where are they? What are they doing? If you are a pastor who can perform miracles, if you claim you are a pastor who can heal, if you claim you are a pastor who has solutions to the uh, problems of mankind, this is your chance. This is your chance. We have many sick people. Perform your miracle. Heal them. And then we can know that you are sent by God. And you then we will believe that you are God sent. Hey, no. But now, they are not saying anything. They are not doing anything. I don't know what they are doing about it. But we are not hearing them. What is going on? I'm sure a lot of Ghanaians are worried too and they're asking themselves. So this tells you, in conclusion, in conclusion, what the, what the deduction I have made from this is that all those pastors are fake. They are not from God. There is nothing like they are angels or whatever they call themselves. They are all fake. And my worry is my sisters especially the, the the females they leave their offices they leave their uh, stores they leave their market centers and they go and sleep in churches looking for miracles for people who can't even help themselves 
Have you seen the latest pictures of those supposed men of God? They are wearing nose masks. They are wearing gloves and protective clothing, protecting themselves from COVID-19. If they have the power to perform miracles, to bring dead people to life, to heal all manner of sicknesses like they said they, they do, why are they afraid? Where I where are they? Where are they hiding? They have all coiled back into their shells. Never to be seen again. I'm, I'm sure when when we are able, when God is able to, uh, when God re reveals the antidote to this deadly coronavirus to the world and everything is over, they are going to come out and begin their usual trade again. And all we hear is that they are publishing their account numbers and mobile money numbers for people to send tithes and then uh, whatever to them. Others are complaining of how they are going to starve and how they are not going to be able to pay their church members. And that is that all you are worried about? You are not worried about how your church members are faring and how they are going to be able to stay alive and defeat this virus. All that you are worried about is how your money is going to get to you. My brothers and sisters, if you are a chronic church member who goes to church three, four times in a week, please advise yourself. Being you won't be blessed because of how many times you go to church in a week. The blessings don't come like that. You are just helping to enrich someone. They take your money and they buy all the Porsche cars, the luxury houses, and they go and commission them and the same people go with them and you hail praises at them when they are commissioning those houses when they are showing off those luxury vehicles and ask yourself you as the church member what have you benefited what have you benefited this is a wake-up call i think covid 19 among other things has come to open our eyes as a people to have a second thought about the decisions we have made in our lives about the people we rely on. We rely on human beings to perform miracles. We rely on human beings to give us solutions. It's time for us to rely on God, the creator himself. Because even those men of God are saying that this time it's only God who can take us out of this predicament. So why go and pray to a pastor Worship a pastor, call him the angel, call him your Lord in order to get miracles. Why do that if he cannot deliver you from COVID-19? And it's only God who can deliver you from COVID-19. So why go back to the pastor after God has delivered you from this COVID-19? Why go back and worship that pastor and cry to that pastor for miracles? Why go back to him? This is a question I'm going to leave to all of you to answer yourselves. Thank you.